So I was asked to do a video of my system, its components, and in particular why I chose what I chose. So uh, let me go ahead and get started with that. That is my Marantz AV8802. I've had it for about six years now. Recently did the upgrade to make it an A model, which means it'll now process a 4K signal. Marantz did that. I sent it into their uh, repair center in New York. The only thing I paid was shipping there. They did the upgrade and returned it to me uh, for no additional charge. So I thought that was really good of them to do. And uh, up above there is a little screen that I use if I'm running Odyssey or anything like that. And that's one of the things I like about the Marantz and pretty much all new uh, better receivers, or in this case, pre-pros. Uh, do this where they're very configurable as far as uh, setting up the sound control and speaker sizes and running Odyssey XT32 and things of that nature. But I've uh, been very happy with it. I've always liked Morantz. I thought they've always made a really good product for, you know, going back to the 70s. Obviously, it's under uh, different ownership than it was then, but it's still been great. And uh, it's very flexible. Um, has uh, XLR and RCA outputs, so I think it's a good value. And I, I bought that, um, originally I got that as a refurbished unit from um, Accessories for Less, saved me about 1500 bucks off a list. Then below that is my tube-based preamplifier, that is the Balanced Audio Technology VK33. Bought that used as well for significantly less than new MSRP and uh, bought it from a reputable online store. I believe it's called the Music Room out of Colorado. And they gave me, um, I believe it was 30 days to try it out. I wound up retubing it because the tubes that came in it were kind of weak and were making, um, I was getting some hissing noise out of it. But once I retubed it, it sounds fantastic. I've always wanted to try a tube preamp found a deal I liked. I read some reviews on this piece. All the reviews came back really good. I know Balanced Audio Technology has a, a great uh, reputation within the community, the audio community. So that's why I pulled the trigger and the 30 day uh, return policy. Figured heck, if I don't like it, I'll send it back. So as you can see, I still have it and it's a little cooling fan above it just because like again, that's a two preamp and they can run pretty hot. Underneath that is an NAD 6 channel amp for my um, Atmos speakers. Again, NAD has a great reputation. And uh, so I went with that. I got that used as well. Um, and it's, uh, let me think, this one is 6 channels, 90 watts per channel. And again, that runs my ceiling speakers. Below that is a an Xbox One, which I don't use very often. I'm not a big gamer, but once in a while I'll, I'll do something with that. And a cu couple power conditioners underneath that. All the way down on the bottom there is an Rotel RMB1095. It is a five channel amp, 200 watts per channel. Got that used as well. I've had that uh, the longest of any piece in this room back here. I've had their Rotel and it's been a workhorse. I have to say, I think Rotel, dollar for dollar, is one of the best um, companies out there. Thing's been a workhorse, it sounds great. It's never given me one one reason to, uh, to worry about anything. It's been fantastic and um, I would not hesitate to uh, buy another piece of Rotel equipment down the road. Then, uh, my main power conditioner down in here is the Shinana Research. That is the uh, PS8 Venom PS8. Uh, I know some people think uh, all these power conditioners are a bunch of snake oil and they don't do anything, and that's fine. Again, I read a lot of good reviews about this and uh, got this from Music Direct, which gives you a uh, trial period with any of their equipment. And I uh, decided to hang on to that. It's um, I've got that hooked up to a dedicated 20 amp circuit. 
So that's pretty much it for the equipment back here. I'll go out into my main room now. Okay, I'm in my theater room now. I'll start with the projector. That's the Optima. I believe it's HD 33 is the model number. I've had it a while and don't remember, but I think that's right. It's just a 3D, uh, 3D um, 1080p projector, DLP. I'm sure I'll get into 4K eventually, but for right now, I'm very uh, satisfied with the picture quality from this projector. And I do have a, uh, a Darby unit in the back. So um, I really like the Darby as far as uh, it really sharpens up the, the image a lot and almost looks at, to me, it almost looks like 4K with the Darby in there, but it's not. And again, eventually I will get one. So I'll kind of try and slowly turn over to the front wall of the theater here. That is a silver ticket. 120 inch 16.9 screen bought right off of Amazon um, I got this for god I want to say under $300 delivered to the door um, was not very difficult to set up put together I had my son help me with it but we were able to uh, get that done and I'm absolutely um, satisfied with the per performance of that especially when you consider but I paid for it. And it's just, uh, I think it's 1.3 to 1. It's just Cine White, I believe, is the material they use. And uh, it's just a standard wall mounted screen. So I'll come down to my speakers, my um, Aerial Acoustic 7Ts. I did a review on these before because I just like them that much. These speakers sounds so good now there again they just had the four drivers in the front and they the, the cabinet finish i like a lot it's i think it's a very nice finish but these speakers don't look like you know something you would see uh in a in a museum or something you know some speakers look like very um opulent very unusual but these uh, just look like standard speakers because that's what they are. But I'm telling you, these things sound fantastic. They, the imaging on them is spot on. If you set them up right, they just sound incredible. They really do. So I will not try not to wax poetic about those anymore. But trust me, if you ever get a chance to audition these, um, check them out. Um, when I got these, I got these used. Um, I paid significantly less than um, new retail. I believe now that they're a thousand dollars. No, I'm sorry, eleven thousand a pair, not a thousand. Um, I believe it's the NMSRP on them now. They went up a little since I got them. And right next to that is uh, one of the four subwoofers I'm running. That is the Martin Logan Descent I. Correct. That's uh, two hundred fifty watts and. Uh, three eight inch drivers in there one of the reasons I went with the Martin Logans is that they are sealed and servo controlled which is what I prefer in a subwoofer they won't go quite as low or quite as low probably as a standard ported subwoofer but they do plenty um, they plenty of clean output in this room which to me is the more important thing uh, the reason uh, for a servo control on those is what that does is Say you're in a car and you hit the brakes real quick. You know how you, you your body just moves forward even though, though the car is stopped? What a servo does is it stops the woofer from extruding when it shouldn't, which cuts down on distortion and um, just gives it um, a more controlled output. So that's that. Over here are my amplifiers that run those aerials that I was just showing you. Uh, those are the Musical Fidelity M8 700 mono block, 700 watts per channel. These were dealer demos, again, through uh, Music Direct. So they gave me a 90-day um, period to try these out. I've always wanted mono blocks. Heard some fantastic things about uh, these amplifiers. I contacted Aerial Acoustics to make sure that the power 700 watts per channel was not more was not going to damage my speakers and they assured me that as long as I didn't go crazy and um, turn my amps all the way up um, I would be fine and um, 
Michael Kelly also uh, said that he uh, he thought there would be a great match. Um, I used to have a Macintosh amplifier that I sold to a coworker. I really like Macintosh a lot, but just wanted to try these out. I've always wanted mono blocks, so I pulled the trigger, and uh, there you have it. Moving over to my center channel, let me pull the grill off of that real quick. Um, that is the Aerial Acoustics CC3. Um, I used to have uh, a Definitive Technology um, CLR 300, I believe it was, or 3000, I don't remember, 3000. And that was a bigger center channel and it even had an amplified uh, woofer on the top of it. Now this is not a small center channel speaker, as you can see, it's probably a little bit bigger than average, but as far as dialogue clarity, this thing blows the doors off the definitive technology. It, it's, I never have to like crank up the volume on the center channel to try and hear what people are saying. It comes through very clearly. I got that used as well. I don't remember from where, but uh, yeah, that thing that thing's great too. And then over there is uh, a 4K Samsung Blu-ray player up on top that I that I picked up recently because unfortunately some of the studios um, are only including an Atmos soundtrack on their 4K discs and not their Blu-ray discs. I think that's a, literally a crime, but I figure for. Well, it was 99 bucks. I figured, okay, I'll pickle it up and stop fighting the battle. And then underneath that is the Oppo BDP 105. Again, that's not a Derby unit because I have my Derby unit in my back room. And then there is the other aerial and the other um, smaller Martin Logan sub right up there. I have some sound control over here, some absorption. There's some more absorption back there because as we all know, um, the room plays a bigger role as anything else in the, as far as the final sound that you get inside your room. And I've got six of the Martin Logan in-ceiling speakers. I've explained in other videos um, why I put six in here, so I won't go through that whole scenario again. Come on over here, this is my little audio hub over here. Uh, that is a screen for if I'm just wanting to get some information off that Marantz in the back or anything that, uh, so I don't always have to turn my projector on to be able to do that. And I also have a, a laptop down there which I um, use to run uh, primarily title for streaming. Um, and the screen is kind of hard to see. So that's also hooked up to that, so if I'm trying to navigate through title I can just look at that bigger screen out there and then coming down my my rack here those are my hi-fi man HE500 planar magnetic headphone amplifiers with a little tube based um Volari amp or there is my Yamaha linear tracking turntable I do listen to vinyl mostly in another room but sometimes I will listen to vinyl in here and uh, um, just like the old school look of that Yamaha, to be honest with you, it, it sounds fine. It's not the greatest turntable in the world, but it sounds fine. And I have to admit, I uh, partially um, purchased that because of its aesthetics and then I just like the way it looked, but it does sound good. And then underneath that is my MyTech Brooklyn DAC. And I got that partially due to its ability to decode MQA, which I understand is a very divisive uh, format right now. A lot of people think it's a waste and, and everything, but I always say, you know, get what you like. If, if you don't have to, don't worry about what everybody else thinks and don't let them tell you that it's all a bunch of garbage and it's not worth it and it's never going to take off. And the MQA notwithstanding, one of the cool things about that is it's like a Swiss Army knife. It not only has uh, in digital inputs on it, it also has an analog input on it. So that turntable is hooked up to that, and I'm using the Mitex Phono Preamp, the Sony 
um, servo that you see underneath it is also hooked up to that as well as the JVC player you see down there. So all that is, is hooked up and I'm basically using that as a preamp and then I send the signal out via two XLR cables through that racetrack that you can see running along my baseboard all the way over there and then up right to the um, right to the right of that speaker you can see that white subwoofer wire sticking out and I've got some other wires running up to that other room through there then my side speakers two pair of those once again aerial acoustics those are the SR3 so there's one there's two three and four the reason I went with those again is they're not an exact match to the um, to the ones they have up front they're an exact match to the center channel so those match the center channel when I say match I mean as far as like driver configurations and materials and everything like that but they um, they sound close enough to those over there so you can see the direct difference in the drivers these are an older model and these are a newer model so these slight you know different drivers but they sound close enough to one another where they sound fine it's not like oh my god the center channel sounds way different than the main speakers and again so these employ pretty much the same drivers as the center channel does there's a uh, midwoofer there and a mid-range and tweeter on the front and on the back as well same thing obviously with those they're all the same two more of the martin logans and all the way back here same thing then my former main and side speakers the definitive technology. These are the 7000 ones with the built in sub powered subwoofers. And those are the, um, God, I can't remember the model number of those. BPV, BPVX, that's right. So there's now all four of these are hooked up to the rear channel. Just because I had them laying around, I didn't want to ship them out. Uh, I just figured, well, why not keep them for the rear channels? A lot of people, uh, you know, use kind of smaller underpowered uh, rear channel speakers. And um, I figured, well, I'll buck that trend and just go big or go home. And there's the other Martin Logan subwoofers. That's the bigger um, Descent Eye, which is. Um, those have uh, 310s and a 750. So there's that one. And there's that one. Now one thing I will say, even though those, these definitives are very big speakers and they have the built-in powered subwoofers that supposedly go down to 17 hertz, which uh, I'm not saying definitive um, exaggerated that, but I can't. They won't go down to 17 in my room that much, I can tell you. I've tried, I've done tone sweeps and everything. They do not go down to 17 in here, nowhere near it. As a matter of fact, those aerials up front, and I, I swear I'm not a spokesman for them or anything, you might think so at this point. Those speakers there, I used to have the um, definitives I just showed you where those are, and you, I get better lower cleaner base out of those that just have those you can see what's in them there's four drivers per cabinet no power subwoofers no nothing these things have eight three in the front three in the back and the power subwoofers down here that you can let me see if I can yeah see I'm pushing that in it's a pretty pretty good size woofer in there those aerials play much uh, lower and cleaner. I like the mids on them better. 
I'm not here to bash Definitive. Um, if I didn't like them that much, I wouldn't still have them in the back like I do. I would have gotten rid of them and replaced them. But I have it because they're good speakers. But the arrows, in my opinion, to me, that's all that matters. Um, they're a much better speaker now. I will also say that they're more expensive. They don't have the same drivers and the and the um, you know the amplified woofers in them, but they're still more expensive, even though there's less drivers in them. But I, in some cases, I believe you get what you pay for, and I believe that that's definitely the case here. So uh, I will just wrap up there. I wanted to put this up because I got a couple requests for it. So as always, questions, comments are always welcome. Thank you.